open set, any ball, no matter what radius it is, no matter what size ball I draw around this, would you agree that it intersects a green point? Good. So E is a limit point. Is D a limit point? Is C a limit point? Yes. Notice the definition doesn't require P to be in E or not. It could be in E. It doesn't have to be in E, right? Just requires that there's some other points, no matter what neighborhood you take, there's some other green points in that disk. With me? All right. Perfect. So uh, C, D, and E is A a limit point. Why not? It contains a point of E. That's A. Uh, can't be the same point. So A is not a limit. Is Z a limit point? Good. C, D, and E are limit points. Z and Z are, uh, A and Z are not. Okay. This actually, excuse me. Oh, we didn't even talk about B. Yeah, question. Is B a limit point? Yeah. Ah, thank you. It's not in the set, but any disk will contain a point, a green point. Excellent. Okay. Uh, that being said, it, 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 it's actually going to be helpful for us to maybe say what a, when is a point not a limit point. And this uh, learning to negate a condition or a definition uh, is a useful skill. So I want to spend a, uh, a few minutes talking about that. So if P is a limit point, P is a limit point if all these things are true, what does it mean to say a point is not a limit point? So let's say a point P uh, is not a limit point of E. What does that mean? Go ahead. Yeah, so Rebecca's saying, if there exists a neighborhood, if there exists a neighborhood, N of P, such that what? Any, I'll just say it this way, any other points of E. Everybody happy with that, Willie? Excellent. Can you hold that question for a second? I'll come back to that. The question was, if uh, you have a limit point, does an open ball have to take, contain infinitely many points? We're going to answer that question in just a second, but if, if, you're, if you're bored, you should try to think wh whether that's true. If it's true, uh, come up with an argument. Excellent question. Uh, we're going to come back to that. Now, so does everybody see why this is the negation of this? That is, if I want to say something's not a limit point using this definition, w w what happened here? I mean, it's, uh, how did I get from this statement to this statement? What happened to every when I negated it? It turned into a there exists, and then what happened to the rest of it? For every blah, something is true. It became there exists a blah such that something is not true. Okay, so this is this is a uh, it was just a little bit of logic, so let's let's just let me just put this here. In fact, if you don't mind, I'm going to put that here because it's sort of an uh, aside. So I'm going to put it to the side. <laughs> okay, so just a little logic practice. We're going to see what it means to negate a statement. So uh, let's define a horse. We'll say a horse is superior <coughs> if. Um, every leg is strong. Okay, now I just made up this definition. It's not something that horse people normally use. Okay, just I just made up this definition. Okay, horse is superior if every leg is strong. So a horse is not superior. Not to be confused with supremo. Um, not superior. How would I negate this? Good. If there exists a leg that's not strong. Okay. So this is exactly the same thing that happened over there. This is just an example. 
So let's just point out what, what exactly happened here. Really what we have here is a condition that looked like this. A horse is superior if for all x, x being a leg, ax is true. Okay, And that turned into a, there exists a leg such that ax is false or not true. Happy with that? So when you negate, this is actually really helpful when, when our definitions start getting really complicated to, to remember this. Negation turns a for all into there exists. And then it, it changes the, uh, it negates the, the statement following. Okay, what if I do a, um, what if I had a statement that was uh, there exist and I negate it? It becomes a for all. Okay, so an example here might be um, a horse is lame if it has a broken leg. Right, would you agree it just takes one broken leg to be lame? Yeah, maybe. So. Uh, it's not lame if what? If every leg is not broken. And once again, what I want you to see is this becomes, uh, this is a there exists a leg x such that ax is true. It became a for all x, ax is not true. Everybody happy with this? Bonnie? Uh, not according to my definition. Right? I just made a definition here that said a horse is superior if every, it's, I'm requiring every leg to be strong in my definition of superior. Okay. Is that, was that your question? Yeah, I mean, Oh, sorry, yes. The, so the question was, what, do you, what is the meaning of this word if, right? Yeah, so th that's, this, is, this is an ambiguity that, that almost every math textbook does and doesn't deal with. When we make a definition, the if in this statement really means means, okay? We say a horse is superior. To say a horse is superior means every leg is strong, okay? But this if is not the same as a conditional if that's an implication because it's a definition. Does that make sense? Yeah, that, that's an excellent point. This is not to be confused with an implication. And by using the term if and only if, you're only making people think it's, it's, a, it's somehow not a definition, right? It's a conditional. But you could, if, if you're happy, write if and only if. But what, I, what we really mean by this if is means. So there are no other situations besides this that you'll call a horse superior. I think that was your question. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's true of all these. Of all these, uh, in all these places here. When I when we say if in a definition, we mean if and only if. We mean means. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. So that's a little aside for our little for logic. Let's. Um, there's going to be a number of definitions we're going to make here because we're, we're really uh, uh, learning some terminology uh, related to the, what we call the topology of the real line. By the way, the, the topology is a word I, I'm not sure your book defines either, but it's in the chapter title. Topology just refers to the, 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 the set of open balls. Okay, so a collection of open balls is called a topology. Um, and it, it actually comes from, I mean, you'll see in, in the class topology, you basically do a lot of this stuff without a metric, and you just refer to open balls. Okay, great. Um, let's see. We looked at this example here, and we said A and Z are not limit points. So let's just check that it satisfies this, def this, uh, this statement. A point P is not a limit point if there is a neighborhood that doesn't intersect any green point. Is that true of A? Well, any other green point besides A itself. Yeah.